always good. Zeus, Ember Spirit. Mm, I'd rather a Leshrac than a Zeus, mm -hmm. I think. I just, I, I want to, I want to, I want to pressure Towers even though, all right, all right. we're going to go back to the Koi for Queen of Pain. Seven and one, it's his most statistically most successful hero with Alliance. Should be a pretty good lane here against the Death Prophet. Yep. Guys, I think this is the most even draft of the series. I, I have think? to agree on this one. Like, both of the drafts uh, look extremely good, even though... Pick. And uh, you are favored against the DP, but once you hit the mid game, it's just so hard. Mm -hmm. oh, so hard. The only real tower push Alliance have is on the back of these Ross towards as well. They're going to need to play faster on the map and find kills. But it's, we've also oh. seen from Alliance when Koifer re-entered this team that these this is one of these heroes that he just propelled them forward with. Like they gained that mm -hmm. momentum and they just rolled with it. And as we saw in game two, once they have the momentum, they're willing to push. They're willing to say, like, we're going to back our timing and push a little harder. But how do you push into RNG? Like, we saw the Oracle up pretty early. The DP was picked up third and they were willing to grab this early too it's a lot of strength a lot of survivability inside yep. the rng lineup and they how also, do you have the sustained damage to it with the, with the juggernaut yep. that's the concern right because you also have the um the yeah wow is he gonna find the ward base yeah, on the movement he, he probably he, will he, they, they pinged exactly actually that was, that was yeah that was, uh, it was CK. orange yeah but they're still gonna find it i think maybe he's cutting into the oh my god <laughs> are you serious <laughs> This is some ner this is some try hard <laughs> stuff right here. All right, you do not see this in hey. pub matches. My God, nice job by Tiger though. He does find the war with the shenanigans cutting the tree. I think they were kind of annoyed because like in game one they tried that and they couldn't find it and they wasted their sentry. Was this like you know, we'll, we'll take four hits from a tower just to ensure we know exactly where the vision is? Indeed. And uh, man, this is gonna be this is gonna be a cool game. I, I RNG. Their supports have less offensive capability in team fights, but you, you're the save, the hard save of the Oracle, plus the Shaker uh, counter initiation. It, Alliance have to ensure that when they strike, that they actually execute, they find those kills, because the counter initiation of RNG is super strong this game. Strikes coming up towards top lane. I don't think they're really gonna be able to chase hard, but ZK's not giving up. Uh, they fissure blocked up, and this is the rotation that can come from the ES. But once they blow everything, a lot more confidence for Mickey. He's yep. just like, okay, now I can move in. And he did a hell of a lot of damage on his previous Juggernaut in this series. I want to see if he's able to achieve the same type of thing when this happens. The spin onto CK, the slow onto Monet, but the fissure from Lanham cutting off Mickey, so he cannot stay in range for the Blade Fury to do its work. Really well played by Lanham, and you can see. Uh, Fu, who's trying to tank the creep wave, but he realized that it's it's too much damage. I'm gonna just let it go into tower. They want to make sure they can disrupt the pull, but really great job there from Insaney. He actually got a couple of creeps off the hard camp pull through the tree cut near his tower. And Taiga just camping middle, hitting Setsu in the face. You want to get a co-op start to start snowballing. This is a really easy way to do so. Mm -hmm. As long as he doesn't stay too close for the experience, but considering he's battling on the other side of the river, and they're forced to rotation off, so ES has now had to come to mid lane. But the Earthshaker can't gank Koifer, like, mm -hmm. you just blink over the fissure line. So it's not as effective as normal ES rotations into the mid. And top lane, it's very difficult to pressure Mickey too much, even though CK is a strong laner. You know, both poles are active for Insania. Oh, wow, okay. Did Fly by. solo kill him? Uh, yeah. Yeah, he did. Tiger was trying to come in to help out, and I think, uh, like, this, that lane's been hitting each other pretty hard as it is. Mm. Boxy will TP back down to bottom lane. But that's the that issue of Retaliate. Out. You got all the damage out, but try and push him away. But Tiger's caught in the wrong side of the tracks. And this will be another kill to RNG. One more attack should do it, and Lanham can reach him for it. That's the second Fisher that has either acquired or saved a, an they, ally. Yeah, and instantly up towards top, they move their attention. How is that Monet. He just real like, he doesn't have a reality rift. He goes for the initial stun. And then Afu has a follow-up control. Then another, another Fissure in towards mid. They're just going everywhere. And Koifer knows he has to blink himself out. Too much harassment, and the Crypt Swarm was available from Death yep. Prophet, but she held it. Yep. Lanham, Lanham is trying to go to TI. All right, you can <laughs> feel it. Uh -huh. um, he, he has made a bunch of excellent movements thus far, all kills, except for that one up top, which I believe was just Mickey trying to get aggressive onto the Oracle and being punished for it. But uh, he's made some really great movements thus far, and that's the downside of the roster, Grimstroke uh, dual support. You're, you're very good at controlling players in the mid-game, but your rotating potential is not high, especially in comparison to just a level one Earthshaker. But if you if you land that block, you're, you're able to find kills quite easily. Mm -hmm. You got to be cautious now, bottom, if you're Taiga, because Flyby is just baited right now. Yep. 
but they have no way to really fight with this. Like, you can shackle, but then eventually with the spear, like, the angle that Flyby is playing, Box is going to push him away from the fight. So there's no other sustain once that spear is thrown out. Oh, the CS board is actually pretty damn even. The only one who's a little bit behind is Mika. He's 12 CS. And when I say a little bit behind, he's behind by like 2, 3 CS. And this is the reason why, because they keep initiating on him. Forcing the defensive spin up, and that's half a minute where they can't use it. While on bottom lane, Boxy finds his own target on flyby. But then you've got a little bit of extra life with the Boxy. stick charges. Just walks up and this retaliate stacks is ready to go. 78 plus 91 damage. Boxy, Boxy's just got to relax a bit. He's getting too aggressive, and I understand why. You know, this is a pivotal game, but you, you got to relax. He's trying to do too much is his problem, and he can just trust himself. He's one of the best Mars in Dota. He just has to take a couple deep breaths, go back, just lane, stop worrying about trying to harass and kill a centaur. You don't need to do that. Uh, this, is, this is really when you do see the experience of a team come out. The Lions, like, hey, obviously you want to go to TI, you want to win this game, but... Uh, at least you'll learn something from a loss, right? That's uh. T t don't get ahead of yourself, Toby. It's, um, yeah. it's uh, four minutes into the game, all I right? Know. I know. I'm still seeing four zero on the board and uh, things coming to fruition for RNG. Well, let's, let's see how the runes go. Okay, I think it's gonna be a two for two trade. Lines okay. will be just fine with that. Oh, oh Tiger, Tiger, this would be good if you can get the shackle off. But then again, you've got Lana moving over with his fissure oh, ready. Don't tell me they're gonna turn this around too. Yeah, they're looking for it. Tiger, he's just he's, he's continuing the chase now. Lana's like, well, okay, I've got one stun. Flyby getting enough mana so he can just sit on the side and uh, oh now, God, yeah, he's Lanham. blocked in. That two trees Lanham. in a rock wall. <laughs> Lanham is trying to go to TI, Toby. <laughs> he's trying to get there, doing everything in his power, just continuously in the right place at the right time. Uh, it's, it's such a late run as well for RNG if they make it, because they, they, every every point they get from this tournament is kind of what's going to get them there. And then they would knock out their other team. They would knock out e Whoa, to get but there. A flyby, he makes a mis oh. even bigger mistake than Ooh. Boxy's. I would trade two hero kills for a courier any day of the week. That's like the third time in this tournament I've seen Boxy with a well-timed smash just kill a courier in one shot. Really well done. That was his level six first. He literally has an XP advantage now <laughs> because killing the courier is a broken amount of gold and XP. That is insane. And that uh, that actually denies the boots completion as well for flyby. A uh, flyby. I'm now doing it too. Monet, Shackles are here. Insania waiting as Mickey moves in. They'll have the Inkswell follow up. And uh, with the spin, they actually get a double stun. So one is going to turn into two. A quick charge away with the Stampede. But Koif is rotated in while on bottom lane, Boxy skewers away the center who try to begin this with Lanham. Back under the tower, the CK is still dying. They're diving in as deep as they possibly can. Koif can finish the job with that rotation. Boxy needs to play the trees. Ooh. The Hawkstorm off target. He's juking around so hard, Boxy. And they can't finish the job. Lanham's got some damage, but and he's keeping up the chase. He doesn't want to give this one up. The fissure will connect, and then he'll move up through the engines. But Boxy's already to the other side and away. While the Lions now move back towards the mid lane to think about, okay, they're warding up, ready for Koifer's level of aggression. Yeah, Koifer doing a great job in this mid lane. Took a lot of heavy harass, and yeah, sure, the Death Prophet does have more CS. It's 34, 11 to 29 and 9, but you can see the net, net worth, worth favors Koifa, partly because of the courier kill, that's like 175 every player, but also because Setsu's had to buy a lot more regen because he's taking so much harass from this three-point Shadow Strike build on Koifa. It's all about that harass and the early lane pressure. Oh, well, they're going on bottom lane. Flyby trapped up against the wall of Boxy. Anyone wants to TP into this will have to go into the wall as well. Nice Vigit catching a double summon Tiger and Insania. Insania has no more mana to work with, but they go onto Tiger with the Spirit Siphon. Lanham trying to close that gap to get the kill onto Tiger. Have they got enough with bottle charges up? Back under the tower. Tiger, he's going to live through this. So they do the rotation while up on top. Mickey initiating on, but he's still got his spin, so he knows he's safe. They just have to keep this healing ward alive, and Mickey will redo all the damage that was done by RNG. He's looking pretty all right for Alliance right now. The, the thing about the RNG draft is that their burst damage, or rather their sustained damage potential, is limited and it's cooldown based. You fight without Phantasm, without DP ult, there really isn't any DPS to speak of. Alliance, you know, Quap, Jug, like, sure you need Omni Slash, but realistically there's just a lot more sustained damage potential. To get utilized soon. Mm -hmm. Got to take some objectives here. Abuse. Alliance's lack of core-based tower pressure. 
I guess if Alliance just continue to farm like this and their support start finding levels, you will get mm -hmm. hard hitting combinations. You will have Boxy be a fantastic Mars. And their team fight control is nuts as well. You just drop a Mars ulti. There's nothing anyone on RNG can do to get out of it unless Lana picks up an Ags. And that's, okay. that's a ways away. <laughs> he's, he's feeling the Omni Slash onto Afu. He won't get it, however. He needs a little extra more damage. And Senior is there to try and grant it. And they got more support rotating in from the side. Tiger can't close the distance. And that one Observer Ward sitting in the river kind of lets RNG know that mm. something was up a little earlier. I love this warding though from Insane. He's already got two great uh, wards planted on the dire top, a radiant top shrine. Has vision of the mid lane as well behind the tier one. It's really cool. You want to make sure you get your wards up first. It's also interesting to see how the warding patterns have changed. It's great for Lanham. He gets the wraparound with the fidget block up. Boxy has to make a break into the tree lines, but they got enough control. A uh, quick push back. Nailed towards the tree, but maybe Koifa double damage Rudy. He's thinking of coming in and Boxy. He actually started to heal up, and that's why Koifa, he really won't let that Sonic Wave go to line up three of them. And now, no, he pulls out of it twice, baiting out the Stampede. Now lose the double damage runes, it, get pur it gets purged off, but that's uh, Alliance turning around RNG's aggression. That's yeah, really well done. I uh, like the, the discipline from Koifa, you know, recognizing that he might be able to find this kill, but better to save the ultimate, force out the stampede. And now he's just actually sitting bottom. He, he wants to really follow up with yeah. this. You baited out stampede, there's no escape mechanism anymore. Yeah, I like this, because playing with Boxy means that both heroes are safe, you can control the runes easily, mm -hmm. and it ensures Taiga's able to get his level 6 middle, so he's farming there uncontested. Top lane, a little bit troll for Mickey, but that's why he spins. Does not TP, because he doesn't have the mana for it. He can wand, but he decides not to, no reason to waste it. They're going again. So if at first you don't succeed, try again. Boxy playing from the trees. Cuts down one so he doesn't get caught in. Yeah, quick push back. The end. Boxy goes into the oldie form Insania. Can't reach in time to get the stun out. Yeah, too much but that's exorcism being burned. They have to push to the tier one tower now, RNG. For sure. And there's an arcane rune on Quap, so you got to be a little cautious. Boxy probably saves himself there, but he hesitated in the trees, waited a second or two to get the ultimate off, and they just walk forwards with the DPLT popped. And as you said, the glyph will be used, but RNG if no one else rotates here, it's going to be an easy tower thanks to the exorcism, although only 10 seconds left in the duration. In fact, they just have to back away. They, they see Koifa, and they're just afraid of his movement. That's the big benefit of the Alliance lineup right now. There's no method of canceling the Jug Spin TP top, so he's feeling no pressure. Mm -hmm. Boxy might die, but he'll just TP back in, and Koifa can farm while still having that movement to be there and support if RNG try to make that play. Man, you can't push the wave against the Grim Stroke. But when you actually bring Mars up as well, like you can spear and stroke the wave and then it's totally gone. So how mm -hmm. are you meant to continuously add pressure? At least the tier one towers don't have backdoor protection, but this is, it kind of dispels a bigger problem for RG. Like how do you have a sustainable wave there until CK is big enough? And Monet, I think his net worth's not terrible. Like it's looking good. He's building into the Midas. He'll, he mm -hmm. will scale nicely. It's just that lack of a uh, playmaker. I mean, yeah, sure, Lanham can rotate in the early game. Oh, Phantasm just popped immediately. Uh, he wants to stop this. Koifa blinks away. There's uh, Illusion need to get getting taken care of, but Tiger just focuses the Mass Serpent Wards onto the Tier 1 tower. That's the primary thing he, need to, he needs to kill off. I like that decision from Monet, though. Just trade your Phantasm for the Roster Wards. Ensure this mid-tower stays alive. You know there's no Death Prophet ultimate up, so... You, you, somebody has to blow a cooldown if you want to deal with that. Flyby has finished his Vanguard. That's so a good observe ward up on top. It sees the movement of Koifa coming yeah. in from the side, but with the spins from Mikke, trying to stay on top of Afu. Difficult to do because you got the false promise available into the Omni Slash. He bounces through the creep wave and back underneath the tower. Whoa, that's not exactly what, he what he wanted to do, especially when Death Prophet's now going to arrive in the double fissure. We'll also connect Mikke and Insania, trying to back out by Koifa! The Sonic Wave! He'll hit over on three, and Mikke is back into the spin. The one shot has given him his life back again, and now Boxy puts up the wall. Lanham is trapped in. Mickey as well as Insania can take care of him underneath the tier 1 tower, but the bigger kills they want, they want more. Flyby will get back to the tier 1 tower safely. Huge rotation from Koifa. You can see the downside of the RNG lineup. They have no DP ult, so the damage output just is not there. And Monet with that Midas rush and no Phantasm, he's not able to help either. Really well done by Koifa. He's played a flawless game thus far. You you probably thought, like like Lotus sitting there, you see the Queen of Pain come up as the last one. Mm -hmm. It'll be like uh, PBD drafting the Skywrath Mage in the Grand Final for EG. So you know what? We just, we've gotten this far, boys. 
by playing really well and our great heroes. Let's just do it again. Yep. Mickey, you can take your Juggernaut. You can never get your Morphling. Everyone's going to band it against you. Koifa, have your Queen of Pain. You have this. You have this. Have your Mars. This is yeah. this is the Alliance hey, comfort zone. It's looking good so far, but they've yet to take a huge fight on the side of RNG with all their spells active. That'll that be is coming true. up pretty soon. The Death Prophet Ultimate's active. They're looking to make a play towards Setsu. Oh, Mickey. He wants to try and hold this off. That healing was pretty close in. One second stun. Monet able to get it on Koi. This will be huge if they can claim it. But the Tiger bought the time. Monet needed one more swing of that blade to get the kill onto Koi. For it would have been huge. Now Tiger's on the run towards the trees, trying to stay in the fog of war. He has mass seven wards available. Monet, Lanham, and Afu all on the chase. Insania's moving over. Maybe with some extra slow, he can help out his teammate, but he won't really. Four heroes from RNG chasing down this shaman. And they'll have to use the Exorcism, which has only got half a second left to hit the Tier 1 tower. They don't get an objective for it. They get a support. Yeah, I really like the Alliance decision to not fish but no. It's Mars is coming in. The Arena of Bloods available. Buyback comes in, and they really want to fight now. Alliance Koifa trying to get in there as the Scream actually is even the Stampede. They can't walk themselves out of this fight. Chaos Knight will go down. Our first TP will be able to complete. Koifa didn't have enough damage to get the kill. He has an Invis room, very timely for the Death Prophet. She'll walk it off. And really. Centaur's beating the tier 1 tower down on top lane too. Yep. Really well done by Alliance though. You don't want to drop wards, Taiga. He just lets himself die, buys back so that they can defend oh, the tier 1. Him. But no, oh, one immediate dump. slam. The damage just spills out pretty damn hard, but Mickey now goes into the spin. Zetsu reveals himself, a quick hit, a silence. Now Zetsu's okay with this. He can tank through the Alliance initiation and land him from the trees. That's one way to punch a ticket to, to, to Shanghai. Just a 1k gold lead, though. Yeah, it is. See flyby. He's got a blink finish now, so all of a sudden, the RNG lineup has that true initiation potential that they need so that they can find the jump and then pop the big spells to look to make plays. But look at this alliance just in control of the timings. They have They're all bounties. four bounty runes possessed, and RNG, they're going to walk over to the And now they're going towards mid. Mickey with the spin. He's already got the ink swell for the double stun. All that early burst damage combining with the stroke of fate. They can't just run it away. Oh. And the sonic wave bounces out. You at least get some level of save onto Setsu, but it won't last long enough. The false promise is there, but Oracle already died. Nice. A quick Stunned. skewer, pull him into the tree line, so you'll get a lot more life back into Setsu Bakoifa. Yeah, they're gonna stay with him. A silence is available, but another silence sent for by Insania with the stroke. He'll find the kill. <laughs> Lanham could do nothing. And Setsu could not get up the ramp, so there was no fissure block out potential. And once again, Monet going begging, but he's going he's going armored. He'll have to join the fight sooner rather than later. This is this is the right decision, but Alliance has done a great job translating these high mobility heroes into kills. RNG getting caught. They, again, they don't have the spells. When they don't have the cooldowns, these fights are not going to go their way. Lanham initiates with the Echo, but wh where's the damage output? The, who's going to follow up? He just goes straight for Mickey. The Healing Lord was still active. And uh, I really like what they did there where uh, Insania waited to use his Ink Swell on Mickey until he was spinning mm -hmm. because it ensures the Oracle will not be able to aggressively purge it off, which is one of the reasons you pick Oracle into Grimstroke, of course, because all these spells uh, are very valuable and you do not want to have to... You don't get, it's the only way you can like remove this extra stun for free. And uh, oh no. Denial. Of course. He has a double damage rune. You get the ward, but top lane. A little bit of... Maybe they were thinking about diving onto Setsu there, but it's just not the play in this situation. Boxy's, by the way, going... Thinking he was getting Vlad's first, he's actually just going to rush Deso. I, I like that decision in this game because they just... All of a sudden, that... Um, the arena the, the smash. No, the, the, smash, the, the rebuke. rebuke. It's just going to slaughter the secret illusions. Starts massive more to the shackles. He caught him mid stampede. Flyby jumps over, but the wall is already up from boxing. Perfect. And underneath the mass seven was they had the extra damage. Afu's coming to try and fight. Flyby can now move through, but okay, Tiger reveals himself. More support is on the way. The Grim Stroke is coming. They won't get there in time. The TP out won't be successful. So Tiger, he will fall. They get the core for the support. They'll take that all day. Mike game, meanwhile, is bottom just farming up. Koi for trying to use the orchid as well. It's a fresh orchid over on Koi for they want to have the fight on Monet. And he's got, and he's got no way to dispel this, so it's a quick orchid. How much damage have you got, Koi for? They're a little bit too far away to get this. So Monet only loses one third of his HP. Yeah, but they force him off the tower, which means Mickey will be able to finish it off. So you trade it one for one, and you're going to get the objective. Armlet now up on the CK, but again, the, the downside of the hero, it's similar to the old school. Um, Death Prophet Terrorblade lineups, but CK doesn't farm as fast and just doesn't really hit as hard. He doesn't scale as well. And 
you, you, but the, the point is you have these long CDs that's very easy for Alliance to play around. Kite the ultimates, let us support get sacked here and there, and just continue to out-farm your opponents. Yeah, that Desolator is done in 18 minutes. Blink Dagger is the next item on the way for Boxy. Yeah. That's just so much damage output. These squishy backline supports. Like if you catch Oracle with the spear into a smash, it's just dead immediately. And it's gonna clear those CK illusions in the blink of an eye, especially with the assistance of a quap alter scream. At least they can have some nice observer walls down RNG. That that fresh one that's inside the dire jungle. Mm. I think they're still looking for it. Like Insania just dropped his second sentry ward. Uh, but they're a little too high. Like the man who didn't have a, a lot of money to begin with, he's got nine CS on this uh, Grimstroke. Who, uh, I mean, sorry, that's uh, that's the other way around. Grimstroke actually got more out of the mid. He's got twenty. Look, we we have the Lanham Blink Dagger though. Okay. You, you you can trust that if there's a player in this game that'll change the status quo for RNG, it'll be their fearless leader, Lanham. I, I love how he gets the he gets the Blink Dagger. He then goes up. He burns the shrine. Doesn't matter if it's a solo shrine, but the Lions are looking for their own hunt. They will not want to fight into this Blink Dagger, but they have no idea that it exists. Yep. Meanwhile, Flyby is just adding more and more pressure towards that top lane, building closer towards the Crimson Guard, yep. which is coming on the Courier. That's Mass it. TP is coming to the mid. Now we have our 5v5 fight about to begin. Lanham, Fisher, he doesn't get the block down, but maybe Lanham with a blink forward. There's a silence follow up. Koifa, was he really got nothing? Mars is already dead with oh, the Mass Servant Wars. They actually caught the back lines, combining with the Sonic Wave, hitting on the forward, pushes him out of the Mass Servant Wars with a double shackle. This is oh the God, together, but Koifa Mooney oh. just rips him apart. Koifa is down for the count. Buyback comes in from Mars. They want to keep fighting, but Mone is just on a rampage now. Going through a second, and now you blink Echo. It will arrive. The extra control of the ball back Mars. The ultimate does come down finally from Boxy, but needs to kite out as much of this damage as possible. Mone has fallen. They need the other kill, and they've got it as well. Flyby goes down. Afu. Oh, God, that rebuke. It hits hard, and Boxy looking to line up the spear. Lanham, has he got some extra help? Yeah, he's got a fissure, but it doesn't help enough. RNG losing three to Mickey, the Juggernaut. It was his turn to step up this time around. And he did just that. You could see, though, that that's the problem with Quap right there in a nutshell. He has this... The BKBs from RNG are starting mm. to get there. Four man yeah. smoke up. RNG feel confident to fight. Look how many sentry was have also planted across yeah. their side of the river. They do not want Alliance to know where they are. And, well, Alliance yep. don't. They, they miss the two ults. They, got, they <laughs> just got level 15 on Monet, the plus 15 strength talent. It's about as good of a power spike as you can hope for. All their ults are available. Level 12 on Lanham. Observer Ward, the one they didn't find with the two sentries of Alliance. They see Mickey farming. Can he react in time? The Echo Sign from Lanham is able to connect with the Stampede. They all move forward quickly. And down goes. The Juggernaut, the trade-off for now, the Tier 2 for Tier 2 Tower. Alliance has already got the momentum on the bottom lane, using the Mass Serpent Wars to push it. Does RNG look to push further here? They only use the Echo. You know, thinking about it, they do have a lot of capabilities to push here. It looks like they'll just retreat, perhaps looking to go use their ultimates on the Roche Pit. They know the wards are down from the Rasta, but it looks like they'll just be content. They got Mickey, they traded Towers. Game will continue. And there is a Midas on the CK and no other player in this game, so he will continue to scale. But right now, the Alliance supports very fat. You have a Blink on Taiga and Sania with Aether Lens and a Glimmer Cape about to be complete. So they got a lot of potential to land that Soul Bind, a double hex combo. And they still have massive team fight thanks to the Boxy and Koifa Ultimates that so far have connected in almost every fight. Koi for finishing his BKB in just 200 gold. That's when he can start to truly play his Quap. But Mone is also getting bigger and bigger. Like, he just yeah. finished up a Manta style. That's, uh... It, it's, it's the illusions, though, that are the brunt of his damage. You can't fight reliably unless you have all your cooldowns active, and that's what Alliance is going to look to abuse as this game continues. Bounty Runes in just one minute. I expect we'll see Alliance look to make a play around oh, that. Start your Hex. No follow-up just yet. In fact, they're just letting Lanham sweat it off. The Fisher connects on Boxy, who's in the tree line. Yeah. Surprise, like, they, they must really, because there's no vision yeah. on that side of the map, so they don't know if they can go on Lanham. He's got Shadow Amulet, yeah, too. Yeah, but if this is a scrim, if this is any match <laughs> that doesn't have TI implications, I think Alliance go for that kill. They got three heroes in the area. Mm -hmm. They got a decent ward. You know that RNG had just smoked. 
But either way, they don't want to initiate perhaps, oh, this far away from the Roche pit. And I'm actually surprised they're even in this area of the map. Bounty Rune's up in 15, sure, but... You know, they have no vision whatsoever around the pit. Just sitting there in Viz. Koif is going to blink himself forward. Let him see so much. He can jump from behind Monet instantly into the ultimate, but that's Boxy they gotta get triggering the arena of blood and just wanting to run. But Look Lanham won't let them go. You are here to stay. The Stampede forward. Lanham, they get the silence off at least from Insania. Can they hold him in position? Quote for BKBs. Now the Sonic Wave pushes him back with the BKB from Setsu. He has the damage coming to the front lines. Flyby is the primary target, but Afu gives him the false promise and Monet gives him the stun. You've got trouble for the Juggernaut. Lanham comes in for the follow up stun. Alliance. They what just wanted to get out, and now they lose the Juggernaut, but back-to-back -back stuns and just positioning from RNG is Positioning superb. from Lan M, Toby. <laughs> that is all Quarkle. him. He's gone in. One more attack Momentum. should do it, but he's being stunned up by Murna. No. He actually gets the attack into Afu, will fall, but uh, down goes Koif. He blinked in aggressively to grab that 25-minute penalty yep. rune. And that, that's Quap, right? Two poor blinks, two quick deaths. That's the story of Koifa's game so far, and all of a sudden he drops from top two net worth. Nice mass over more. So this is an answer back. Setsu yep. caught out by Tiger and just yep. worked with Boxy. You can sort of feel the frenetic energy in this game as both teams kind of consistently die farming side lanes, just sticking around a little too greedily because you know th this is... This is, a hard, this is tough. This is one of those games where your heart's at 180 BPM from start to finish. Like, no one's even walked into the Roche pit yet. It's 25, 26 minutes in. Mm -hmm. Even though both sides have the opportunity to make plays around the pit once they see big spells utilized from the enemy team. It's just like before, you are so scared of giving an advantage. If yep. you drop Roshan, you may have just done the hard work for your opposition. BKB is up for the Centaur, so he's becoming even more impossible for Alliance to deal with. The disengage is what they want to do, and that that kind of seems possible when Stampede is used aggressively, but mm -hmm. not if you're able to hold it. Not if ES is being your primary initiator, and he finished up a Shadow Blade. Yeah. So, just continue to close the distance for Lanham. It's great. Every time you get closer and closer to the TI, there's certain heroes that just always seem to find their way e back into the e meta. E yeah. I think Darkseer <laughs> is another one. Oh, really? Yeah. That, that'll that'll always be around at TI, no matter if Vacuum has a 28. 28.0, 28.3 second cooldown. I would like to see the uh, more consistent return of an Invoker, just because of styling, but also Tinker. I'm a big believer oh, in Get the out of here, Toby. Tinker, Techies, Meepo, like, please. Hey, Stick hey. Stick to auto chest. Do, do you mech build in Underlords? <laughs> it's, uh... Get me out. The Lions, five men smoked up. Dyer is scanning, so they can at least walk up into this fog of war. They have no vision down. Now the Observer was there, the hot wall. It comes up, the Arena of Blood with a follow-up silence. You are going to lose Boxy so early in this fight, or do you? He's actually stuck on the edge of the cliff. Teasy, that's not your real estate, but he gets a rebuke off, and they're trying to find him. They have to put the Observer Ward down, but now protected by the Invis, still not dead. He'll blink away to safety. While well, the Mass Serpent Ward's being trapped down, RNG, the target they won. They never really got Tiger's TP out. That won't be successful. An alliance of exactly the fight they were searching for. But they lose both their supports. The Exorcism is burned. Koifu will steal the haste rune. But look how fast RNG move towards Roshan. This is the best opening they've had in a while to go for it. You say that's the fight they want, Toby, but you're walking into a lineup built around huge ult cooldowns. And they pop all their ults. Mm -hmm. It's not a fight you want if you're Alliance. You want to poke and prod, find pickoffs, skirmishes, get some of these big ults expended, then look to engage. You just walk straight at a lineup that has three BKBs. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work. Sorry, CK doesn't have a BKB, but he's got 3,200 health without arm that pops. Like, this is not a real target. And once he finishes the heart, things get really scary for Alliance because that illusion clear from the Jug, from the Quap, like, e even the uh, the rebuke from Mars, like, it just doesn't clear the illusions any longer. And we've yep. seen just how much damage these Rifts are able to deal if he's got illusions nearby. And, of course, he doesn't get the GPM talent. Monet is a game winner. He goes for the Reality Rift, Pierce's spell immunity, which means that there's nothing you can do as an Alliance hero to avoid that oh, mass physical slam, damage. Line him. The Hex Tiger was in the trees. It buys the space for Koifu to get a little bit out of jail. Now a follow up Fissure. And RNG don't want to follow through any further. And Man, I'm giving so many props as well to, like, just the Shaman initiation. Yeah. Just the hero in general, it, how, he pl how he plays with it, Ether Lens. I think the four positions in both these teams have been playing the best Dota at the moment. Mm. Uh, Taiga and Lanham are just constantly the ones around the action, making things happen around the map and saving allies when possible. And how poetic. 17 to 17, just a 1k lead for Alliance as the Bounty Runes spawn up in 30 seconds. Still anybody's game.
net worth lead trading continuously between Monet and Mickey. Uh, do Alliance like can they can they actually get a little bit more aggressive before this heart arrives? It doesn't have long. And this heart is almost there for Monet. But it's all gonna well, come is, down. It, do you actually like get a specific item to deal with it? You've already got the desolator up, so that's something. Uh, you just need to worry about killing Mark, the orc. Get the hell out of there. Ooh, blinks away. They haven't seen the Observer Ward. They have to cut a tree to actually see that, but Boxy, he's going to initiate in, gets the blink, gets the control. If they can kill off the Centaur, he's a huge fat target to get through. And now you let the ulti out, and Monet is caught inside this one. Flyby will stay with him. They'll instantly break free. There is no soul bind to come out in this fight. But now with the shackles, they're holding him there. And maybe Sensu can bring the damage through the rear. But Tiger, he just kept the control on Mone Koifa. Oh, great man to start. Trying to dodge the screen, but it won't dodge the rebuke of Boxy. Flyby is still on the run. He's the one they started with. Koifa gets the information going up in the hill of Fidger. Actually pushes him down so he can start walking again. Sensu back underneath the shrine. There's nothing to work with. Omni Slash is up and needs no more creeps. That means a solo Omni Slash if he wants to go for it. But the silence buys the space for Mickey to actually have to be forced back out, but Boxy, he started it and he's going to end it. Flyby will die, and the Fissure Stone cannot stop Koi for, from getting the follow-up kill into Afu. That's how you take the fight of your alliance. You just you just go in with Boxy, cast the spell, but immediately move away. They get the Mars ult down, but in reality, what the hell is RNG doing sitting in the middle of the Mars arena? They even pop the CK ultimate, and they're just there. Uh -huh. They don't have a target. You don't want to go for the Boxy Mars. He's way too fat, and, and they just... Sort of sit there, the BKB durations fade. An excellent ult from Koifa clears almost all the CK illusions, thanks to the Foxy ultimate as well. And it, that's it, like the fight's over. Doesn't matter if Setsu's ult is popped, you've got no ability to commit. There was a moment where the five RNG heroes were like in a line formation, mm -hmm. as Alliance just was like, well, I guess we can kill you now and continue yep. to pursue. Hey, if Mikkei didn't get silenced then too, they would have actually claimed four. They may have been thinking about pushing down the mid lane at that point, but they move back, they take Roshan, and the Aegis into the hands of that Juggernaut that's getting bigger and bigger yep. as time goes on. He's about to crack 300 CS. He's number one on the net worth board. And his damage is being sustained. You're right, clean through the CK illusions. Quiff, it's a great job of that. They also took that fight. Monet was sitting on like a recipe. He, had, he needed a recipe for his heart. It is now coming out on the courier. Why are you taking that fight? It just feels like a very uncharacteristic mistake. RNG just getting a bit too bloodthirsty. It was the 30 minute runes. Like they were, they, they, was, got the they were so enticing. Yeah, they got, they got. I think they actually got three or four of them, um, because you actually saw uh, the TP down from Lanham. I mean, he actually grabbed both of, of the uh, bounty runes on bottom. I mean, he, Lan, Lanham's trying to make a DI. Yeah. I keep saying it, but <laughs> you do. He, he, he's. Uh, I'm trying. I'm he trying. He wants to be back. <laughs> Two, one, and nine at the moment, but it's more about the way he's been playing his positioning and just the amount of utility he's been able to provide for his team. Monet now at the heart. Those illusions all of a sudden will have a mass HP infusion. Mm -hmm. 4,500 health up on the hero when his armlet is up. They're using Mickey as bait. All the ultis are available from both sides. Mickey, of course, having the Aegis Immortal might be able to tank up a couple more, but they still have some good physical damage. And then, blink, skewer back. Oh, this cannot be the target that dies. The wall, Boxy, huge hit in the back lines, right on top of the Oracle. He can't save anyone apart from himself. Actually, he can't even do that. A quick flyback into the game. Flyby, man, Setsu will fly by. They just can't walk away. They're soul bound out. Mickey, he's going to go with a Sonic Wave and the Omni Slash. The damage is unbelievable. They can get through RNG. Down goes the Chaos Knight. The Echo Slam, land him, punch it, but he can't punch it hard enough. Someone get Chewy. They have to turn around. Alliance can just turn in, get the shackle control, and get the kill onto the center. Four heroes down. No buyback available. That might, that might just be the game. The discipline from Alliance. They hold the Omni Slash. They hold the Quap Bolt. As soon as the Phantasm comes out, both spells immediately used. Those illusions melt. And even though the Oracle is able to save the CK for just a bit, he, he has to hold the Phantasm because he's trying to bait these spells. But as the fight develops, he needs to use it because you don't have damage as a CK without your ult up. Oh, Alliance, they're not going to go for the GG push. They're going for the second lane of Rax. They want to ensure they have the advantage. They can't go for Megas. The Tier 2 Tower is still on top, but... You're this close. If they win this, then the only way they don't go to TI is if Gambit win against NIP and then they lose to Gambit. That's the only way they don't go to TI after this then. Hey, at the end of the day, their fate will be in their hands. It will be, and that's all you can really ask for. And they are two full lanes of racks up. The reset begins, 30 seconds to the 35 minute bounty runes. And Alliance, they are in hell of control of this game. That's still heavy. 
It's a, it, it looks like they're outmatched thus far. But again, credit to Lana, man. He, he played <laughs> yeah. out of his mind. He has. Three men echoed in that fight. There's just really nothing you could do in that situation because... You almost need to start with that. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, Alliance, you have an Aegis on Jug. Can't go for him. Boxy's actually initiating this fight, getting off his BKB early, along with the Koifa BKB, who's also standing very far back in the fight. It's You can't just go, is the concern, because you need to synergize with all your teammates' ultimates to find that damage. Yeah. Four bounties, again, going the way of Alliance. Shiva's now on the co-op as well. He is no longer easy pickings for the Monet CK. I actually don't think I've seen a point where Afu is able to kind of save a core. Yeah. Like, like, like catching Monet in the middle of all of the illusions is going to be an absolute nightmare. But Salt even smoke. the Death Prophet, Alliance is just waiting before they attack the Death Prophet. Yeah. They know they can tank through it. The smoke up. Insania is close. Mickey just begins his TP out. Insania will go invis. Glimmer Cape and into the tree lines. They'll run over him and the sentry wall will be planted. So Insania will die here. We'll see how much is that Grimstroke worth. 3 4 2. Sure. Lanham will claim it. Your failure lives on. He's all Chad and he knows they're in a good spot. They can be confident so long as they. I'm not gonna say what. I'm not gonna say what. Yeah, don't say that. Don't say that. This is during during the minor. It's like okay, come on. We cast a lot of them during during the minor. It's like okay, come on. We now get a little bit more damage. We now get a little bit more damage. The has now arrived for Mars. Has now arrived for Mars. The Aghanim scepter up and running. The Aghanim scepter up and running. Simple formula for alliance now. Buy items. Spend all your gold. Items. Spend all your gold. Try and take this decisive. Look at this last team fight. Decisive. Perhaps wait for the second Roshan. Perhaps wait for the second Roshan. The age is just faded. Between three and six minutes. The age is just faded. Between three and six minutes from now. Trying to increase survivability. You don't have damage. 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 Trying to increase survivability. You don't have damage.
And then the illusions can continue the scout. They'll find Monet. Meke, he's got the double damage room. That's going to be so enticing to jump in. But now the wall, they get the BKBs off with the soul line together. Where is your jump? There's your Omni Slash going to work. They can't get outside of the wall just yet. Even with the BKB, CK's gone down. The Sonic Wave pushes it back up. And Meke, he's turning his attention over towards this DP. Afu is staying with him. But the Shackles, Tiger, he's so far away. At least he got the Yule Scepter. But the Sun Oracle just pops and explodes. Lana, the Echo Slammer didn't connect. Oh boy. They have no more damage. They have nothing more to give. Four heroes down and GG is called Alliance. They push up. They knock, e they knock RNG first out of the epicenter major.